Howdy, everyone. So you might remember a couple, three, four, I don't know, however many videos back when I had the fuselage out in the garage. I had talked about fitting the fuel line, the aluminum fuel line, and I mangled it pretty well. It just wasn't working for me, so I quit. And then I decided to try it again once I had the fuselage in the shop because with the wings off, You've got more room to work when you pull it out of this fitting here. You've got more room to do whatever you need to do. So I had the line in and I needed to do the S curve that is right here. This S curve was the last thing I needed to do. So I had bought the spring type uh, tubing benders. I'll show you those real quick. Let me dig them out. So I bought these. These are springs that you slide over the tubing and then you can bend the tubing by hand and these are supposed to help prevent it from kinking. But for me personally, I don't like them. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with those. I might just go ahead and return them. But I didn't like them for different reasons. So they weren't working for me, so I ended up pulling that line out. And this was my third attempt, this line here. And it's obviously, it's not perfect, but it's in, it's not kinked, and um, it works. So I haven't done this side yet. I'm getting ready to do this side now, and I'll try to document how I do it. But it is basically this. Like I had mentioned before, I believe that I'm using the stock Vans valve, fuel selector valve, and the way that I have it mounted, the fuel lines crisscross, so you can see the existing line is on the right side from this perspective, and then it goes to the left. The line that I'll be working on next will connect on the left side, and it will go over to the right so the lines crisscross each other so you have to make some bends in the lines so they won't touch and then of course you got to do the 90 degree bend to get the line up to the valve so that's the first thing that I start with and like I said I'll document that as I start building on this line the line that's going to go here I'll document what I'm talking about with this valve but basically start with that You'll note that this little bracket here, this little one that mounts to the spar that the line runs through, I have it off on this side. So that's kind of where you want to start. Take that bracket off. It gives you more room to work. And when you slide your line around, you only have to slide it through one bracket instead of both of them, which makes it a little bit easier. So I went ahead, uh, this bracket was off. I went ahead and made my bends for the valve outside of the airplane. Then I brought the line in, fed it through this hole. Of course, it's got to kind of bend around. There's not enough room for it in the fuselage. So when you feed it through that hole, it kind of bends around in here. And then I connected my line to the valve. I made whatever tweaks I needed to do to get it to align nicely to the fitting and still go through this hole nicely. Um, while I was feeding it through this hole, I went ahead and let the line go out the fuselage. So the line was through the hole here, through this bracket, and then connected to this. At that point, I just kind of make a measurement on where I need to do the dog leg bends, and then I do those. And then I put it back, and things weren't aligning the way that I wanted them to. So at that point, I just started tweaking stuff by hand. It looks, it may look like it's all bent to hell, and it's not really. A couple of things I want to point out. Obviously, depending on how you do your bends in the valve, this line, the lines are going to have to be tweaked so that they exit the hole on either side. But when you look at it, this hole stands off from the spar a certain amount. This hole here on this bracket is closer to the spar. So when the line passes through this short distance, it's, it's gotta be bent so it runs uphill. I'm sorry, it has to be bent so that it's further, 
it's further off of the spar at this end, at this bracket, but at this bracket, it's closer to the spar, so it runs at an angle, and it also runs uphill. This fitting is lower to the floor than this fitting, so this line has to be bent such that it runs uphill, and it runs from standing off the spar to closer to the spar in this short distance. That's why this looks like it's got a bend in it, because it does. On this line here, on this run of the line, you've got to go from this fitting. You've got to make a tight, a, a 90 degree bend so that the line will pass through the center of this hole where the grommet's going to go. This grommet will go in that location there. So you have to have your line centered on this hole. Then it's got to make another bend to go through the fuselage. You want it to exit the fuselage straight so it can attach to the wing. Like I said, this length of the line here, this straight run here, has to be centered on this hole for the gus or for the uh, grommet. And then um, you want to make sure that if you've put these accessory holes in the spar, you want to make sure that it clears that in case you want to run cabling or wires or whatever through here. You want to make sure this line fits around that. So there's a lot of bending in this area here. And like I said, it's not perfect. Um, I had this bent, this, these bends here done, and I had this S-curve bend completed. But when I tried putting it together, the 90-degree the part of the line that comes up to attach to the valve, it was off probably like a quarter of an inch. So I had to basically take that length of line and shrink it. But everything was bent at both ends. There was no easy way to pull it back out. I wasn't about to redo it from scratch. So I just put some extra bends in the line through here to take up that space. There's a little bit of an S bend right here. And this S bend here is a little bit more exaggerated than it needs to be just to take up some length to shorten that. Not the prettiest. It's, uh, it's definitely not my best work. But, you know, obviously there's covers that cover all that up, which is nice. The other thing that I want to point out, and this is going to be hard to videotape. This, this line here runs, runs downhill at an angle. From this penetration here to the center of this cutout where the grommet goes, that angle for the line does not match the angle of this bracket. So this, this bracket is at an angle this way. But to get from this hole in that angle to this hole in the fuselage, your tubing's got to be at a different angle. So if you just run this straight, this grommet won't fit right on your cover plate here. The cover plate will be at one angle. The grommet's going to try to follow the tube. It's going to be at a different angle. And that's going to give you problems. So this leg of the tubing has a little bit of a of a bend to it in, in this area here. It kind of sags down a little bit so that the angle for the grommet matches the angle of this face plate that goes here. So let me grab that plate. I'm going to put the plate on and show you what the line looks like where it goes through that cover plate. All right, so here is the cover plate. Of course, I don't have it screwed in place. It's just laying where it needs to be. You could see where the fuel line exits from behind the plate on this end. And then over on this side, you can see where it exits the hole. And you can see how the line, the aluminum fuel line, is centered on that hole where it passes through the cover plate. Now, one thing that I do need help with Obviously, this grommet needs to be on the line like it is now. But for the life of me, I don't know how the hell you're going to muscle that thing. How do you muscle the grommet back into this hole? Maybe it's easier to do when this is all screwed together because this is really flimsy. It's, gonna, it's easy to bend. 
so I don't want to force this on there at the moment but if somebody's got a, uh, a trick to getting that grommet back in there I'd appreciate a, uh, a shout out so anywho again there's the line like I said it's centered in the hole um, and when I push the grommet down as if I was going to install it the angle of the tube is such that the grommet fits flat against the angle of this faceplate. In other words, the faceplate's not angled this way, and then because the grommet is on the tube, the grommet is at some kind of weird angle. You want to try to make the angle of the tube such that the grommet will fit nice with the angle of this faceplate. I hope that makes sense. All right. So again, move that out of the way. So that's how it will look when everything is said and done. I'm going to go ahead and get to work on this side here. And like I said, I'll try to walk you through the process step by step best I can. Again, first thing you want to do is remove the little bracket that's usually in here. Take that out and you can see that I've I put some tape on to protect uh, the spar and you'll see why when I get into it. All right, let me get cracking and and then I'll uh, blah, 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 I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, so step number one, get your aluminum tube and uncoil it. Straighten it as best you can. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight because you're gonna bend the crap out of it just to get it into the fuselage. So don't worry if it's not perfectly straight. Measure off 35 inches. I think 35 inches is a good length to start with, so measure off 35 and cut it. A personal recommendation, I recommend getting one of these little uh, cutting vices. You, you put it in your vise, and then it's got a thumb wheel here that you can clamp different uh, diameters of tubing in it, and then it's got a guide right here for your hacksaw so I just cut this tube let me see if I can move it so you just turn the thumb screw to loosen it so you put your tube in and then you tighten it down and then obviously you'll have a mark you have a mark on the tube at your 35 inch point you just put that line line the line up with the groove that the saw is going to go down into and then you just go ahead and drop your saw down in and cut away and it makes for a nice straight cut I don't like using tubing benders on especially soft material because it tends to leave a raised bead on the outside a little bit sometimes and it definitely leaves a more pronounced burr on the inside diameter. And I find that a little bit more difficult to keep, uh, to clean off. It reduces the idea of the tubing a little bit. So you have to make sure if you use a tubing cutter that you remove all of that burr uh, so that you don't lose any ID for the tubing. So that's why I really like this because you can cut different size tubing with it. It holds it nice and secure, and with the, the guide, you always make a straight cut. So when you're done with that, of course, you want to clean off the end. You want to file down, smooth off the end, deburr it inside and out, and get it ready to flare. So again, 35 inches, cut it, and clean both ends. Okay, so back on the bench, I've got my piece of tubing. It's cut to 35 inches. I've got both ends cleaned up. I went ahead and I flared this end. I've got my nut and my ferrule in place. Here's my 90 degree bend and I put a little initial jog in it just so it can get around the line that's already in place. Now this is all going to get tweaked by hand once it's in but this is a start. I've already got the, some relatively tight bends um, nicely formed with just a standard tubing bender so these the, that bender gives me these nice bends from here 
I can tweak it by hand without uh, the risk of crimping it. Here is the bracket that I was talking about that needs to be removed. The nice thing about this is I've tested it. The reason I have you clean both ends is just so you can slide this on without any problem. If there's a burr on the end of the tube and it won't go through the the uh, the ferrule or the uh, geez, I can't think of what these things are called. Anyway, if there's a burr on the tube, it's not going to go through there. The nice thing is that I've tested this on a scrap piece. I put a 90 degree S bend in a piece of scrap tubing, a nice straight, a 90, a straight, and a 90, just an S curve, a 90 degree S bend. And this will fit on there even after a 90 degree bend has put, been put on the tube. So that's kind of nice. If you get your, if you're in the cockpit, if you're in the fuselage and you're bending your tube, and then after the fact, you're like, oh crap, I forgot to slide this on it will still go as long as you have it inside the fuselage. So by that I mean keep this handy so you don't forget about it. As long as you put it in on the tube while the tubing is in here, it will go. Obviously, if it's out on this side, you're not going to get it through here to get it to the inside. So keep it in the in the fuselage so you don't forget about it and as long as you uh, don't do anything greater than a 90 degree bend that will slip right on all right so now like i said i've got the tubing cut i've got it flared i've got my initial jog in it this is the end that attaches to the uh, selector valve so that, again this jog is just a pre preliminary dog leg, if you will, to help it fit around the tubing that's already in place. So at this point, I'm going to take the other end of the tube and I am going to come from, so this is the side that I'm fitting. I'm going to start at this side of the fuselage. I'm going to come in with that, that unbent end of the tube. I'm going to fit it through this bracket and then as I fit it through the bracket, I'll come across and I'll stick it through the hole in the side of the fuselage. I'll keep feeding it in until I can get the end that I just bent mated to the valve. I want to mate it with the nut to the fitting on the valve and then make sure that the line clears the line that's already in place here. So let me do that.